Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, from the major calamities that have befallen this ummah is that people, they have taken to uh, going to shrines and darbars and mausoleums and they have gone overboard in the dead such that they uh, make them intermediaries between themselves and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even going as far as calling upon the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and making dua to him. So in the coming videos, inshallah, we're going to look at some of their futile arguments and we're going to, uh, we are going to refute them from the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam. And we're going to establish that the one who visits these darbars and these shrines and these mausoleums and he calls upon the dead seeking their assistance, etc. Then he is a mushrik who dies on a religion other than al-Islam and he will be in the fire of hell for all of eternity. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us and our families So when we say to people Look why are you worshipping others besides Allah Make dua directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala They say look we don't worship the Prophet alayhi salam We don't worship the Darbar, the Peer Saab We don't worship the Mawlana We don't worship Abdul Qadir al-Jilani But they are our intermediaries Between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Listen to what Allah says about the Quraysh Who are pagans, mushrikeen They said مَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ إِلَّا لِيُقَرِّبُونَا إِلَى اللَّهِ زُلْفَى That we don't worship them for any other reason except that they bring us closer to Allah. So they said the same thing that the mushrikeen of today are saying. And also they said, هَأُولَاءِ شُفَعَاءُنَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ That these... Things that we are worshipping, they are our intermediaries between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the mushrikeen of today, the brailwis, the sufis, those who call upon others besides Allah, they are using the exact same excuses that the Quraysh used. When we say to people, look, why are you calling on others besides Allah? Don't you see that this is worship? They say, no, 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 we're not worshipping them. You know those ayat which you bring, the Quraysh admitted and they said, مَا We don't worship them. But as for us, we're not worshipping the Prophet alayhi salam, we're not worshipping Abdul Qadir al-Jilani, we're not worshipping Bisab, we're just asking them to intercede. Brothers and sisters, what we need to understand is that doesn't matter what you call it, doesn't matter if you call it intercession, you want to call it something else, you want to call it, you know, tomfoolery or messing about, doesn't matter. It doesn't change the reality. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, dua huwa al-ibadah. That dua is worship. Okay? So when you actually call upon someone other than Allah, this is worship. Doesn't matter what you call it, the reality doesn't change. The Prophet alayhi salam told us that the very action of calling out to somebody and somebody who's dead, etc. This is worship. Brothers and sisters, the Qur'an and the Sunnah, they are full of uh, ayat and ahadith telling us, call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Jinn, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَا اللَّهِ أَحَدًا And indeed the masajid, they are for Allah. So don't invoke and make dua to anybody with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning call upon Him directly. And Allah says in the Quran, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And your Lord has said, call upon me, call upon me, I will respond to you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ And when my slave asks you concerning me, indeed I am near, I respond to the one who calls upon me when he calls upon me. Look, subhanallah, Allah is telling us, call upon me directly. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was riding in front of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum and he said, Oh young boy, I'm going to teach you some words. And then he said, amongst other things, so when you ask, ask of Allah. And when you seek help, seek the help of Allah. Brothers and sisters, common sense, you recite it in Surah Al-Fatiha. What do you say? إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Oh Allah, you alone we worship and you alone we turn to for help. Even Surah Al-Fatiha is a proof against these mushriks. Brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter what you call it. it doesn't matter if you say this is wasila, we're doing tawassul through the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. The very action of calling upon the Messenger of Allah and all of these other people, the very action is shirk. Your very call to them is your worship of them besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the changing of the name doesn't change the reality of what it actually is. And this is shirk akbar, major shirk with Allah. 
And one of the things that we hear from the juhal, the very, very ignorant ones, is that, okay, so when your car breaks down, why do you call it a mechanic? Why don't you just make dua and ask Allah directly? You're asking somebody else for help. Isn't this shit? When you uh, want to learn Arabic, why do you go to an Arabic teacher? Isn't this shit? You're seeking somebody else's help. Brothers and sisters, very simple, three conditions, which you will find consistently in the book of Allah, and the sunnah of the Prophet, alayhi salam, whenever assistance is being sought, be it from the messenger of Allah or other than that. The person has to be alive. You can cannot seek assistance from a dead person. The person has to have the ability to hear your call. There's no point seeking the assistance of somebody who doesn't even know that you're seeking his assistance. And the person has to have the ability to assist you. Allah has to have given that person the ability. So there's no point seeking a kid from the dead man in the grave. There's no point seeking blessings from the dead man in the grave. He doesn't have that ability. And so if you go against any of these three things, then you've committed shirk with Allah. Alive, ability, and he has to be... And these peace and these Maulanas, they have the cheek to say, you know, send me money in my darbar, subscribe to my taweez service, you know, feed me some rice and some food and make my stomach fat and I'll intercede for you with Allah on Yawm al Qiyamah. Or I will come in the grave when you are buried and I will answer the questions in your grave. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man the levi yashfa'u indahu illa bi idnih. Who is it that can intercede with Allah except by his permission. So has Allah given these peace sabs permission to intercede? You know, the most ironic thing is we don't even know these people. They're probably in the hellfire themselves for calling the people to shirk. Peace sab right now probably is burning in his grave and he can't even save that punishment from himself. How is he going to save it from you? Brothers and sisters, this intercession, there is no such type of this false type of intercession. This is shirk. And if you do it, you are a mushrik. Fear Allah and call upon say, him. Oh, you gustaks, you don't accept the position of the Prophet ﷺ. We say, listen, sit down, listen, quit with the assumptions. We accept that the Prophet ﷺ will intercede uh, and begin and ask Allah to begin the hisab, the judgment on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. This is the greater intercession. We accept that the Prophet ﷺ will intercede for his ummah. We accept that there will be people who would have been punished, but had it not been for the intercession of the Rasul ﷺ, he, uh, they would have been punished, but they're now not going to be punished. We accept that the Prophet ﷺ will intercede for the people of major sins, the people who... You know, they will go higher up in Jannah as a result of this intercession. What we don't accept is the intercession which is shirk, your peer sabs. We don't accept that the dead man can intercede. We don't accept that Abdul Qadir al-Jilani and your muftis and your peers will intercede for you. All of this is major shirk. So call upon Allah directly. Otherwise, you will be a mushrik and in the fire of hell.